Hi guys, welcome to this update video this morning. I do hope you're doing really amazing. And we're going to be talking about Erin. Now, Erin this morning is undergoing a period of rapid intensification. So over the past 24 hours, it went from a tropical storm and is now a powerful category four hurricane with more strength than expected. Now, straight away, these uh, category four impacts are staying offshore at the moment, but Erin is bringing impacts to the Caribbean. The uh, periphery of it has been moving into the northeastern islands and likely resulting in some periods of very heavy rainfall and gusty winds. So if you're in the northern Leeward Islands, let me know what's been going on for you. So let's go ahead and talk about the system. Okay, so here we look at the monster this morning. Now, it is kind of best case scenario with how it is right now. Uh, we can see that the center of the system, we can see that defined eye as well. So that is offshore. That's going to remain offshore. But look at these stronger areas of convection. For example, within the vicinity of Anguilla, St. Martin as well, St. Bartholomew, those areas have likely been experiencing some heavy rain and thunderstorms so again let me know what's been going on for you these were the impacts that were in, uh, anticipated even though arid center would be offshore it could be close enough for even tropical storm-like impacts to be experienced and this is the update statement here so it was made after the 5 a.m update you can see that uh title of it noah hurricane hunters find air in a dangerous category for hurricane uh, down at the bottom there we can see the maximum sustained winds are 130 miles per hour so it's pretty likely that these wind gusts are up to 150 miles per hour now will erin actually make it to category 5 hurricane status certainly possible especially at this point it's intensifying a lot faster even than anticipated so in the graphic here is going to reflect the intensity before that update statement, which was 120 miles per hour. And uh, some of the islands were actually taken out of that tropical storm watch. Uh, nonetheless, there's still going to be that chance for heavy rainfall, which may trigger flooding. So again, Erin is going to be staying offshore. And it's going to be starting to make that curve and move more to the northwest as we head into tomorrow afternoon. We see M showing that it is likely to remain a major hurricane throughout that time likely to curve away from the bahamas but again when it is close by very early monday morning it could result in some peripheral impacts so there could be some of those outer bands resulting in periods of heavy rain and thunderstorms those very rough seas as well and that's also going to be uh, the case for puerto rico and the virgin islands as we head throughout today and into early tomorrow in terms of the conditions ahead of Erin, so this is a look at the sea surface temperatures. We can see that it gradually got warmer and warmer for Erin as it made its way to the Western Atlantic. So it is going to be moving into a region that is very, very supportive of intensification as it pertains to the uh, sea surface temperatures. In terms of those upper level winds, this is a look at the graphic depicting that. Those green lines we see indicate areas where the upper level winds are favorable to allow for development or, or intensification rather to take place. So right now, Erin is in an area of low shear. We can see those green lines around it to indicate that. So those upper level winds are pretty much those strong winds further up in the atmosphere that would interfere with intensification. So the conditions ahead of Erin are definitely conducive. And for now, uh, one of the things that's very common among powerful hurricanes is eye wall replacement cycles. And when that happens, there tends to be fluctuations in intensity until that new eye develops. So that is going to be a possibility as well for Erin. But I really think it has a pretty decent chance of making it to Category 5 hurricane status. So again, those impacts are continuing in the Northeastern Caribbean islands. For the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, as we progress throughout the day, conditions will likely deteriorate as Aaron's outer bands bring some impacts there. So please continue to stay safe as best as possible, guys. And I may post another detailed video this evening about the system, so stay tuned for that. But that's it for this morning. I do hope you found this updates to be informative. 
If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll get to you when I can. And remember to always be weatherwise.